Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and we're answering questions. So I can't read this very well. Martin Maris, 8998, I think it says. And I apologize that I can't read it well. It just didn't print well, like really, really, really faint. So thanks for your Q&A videos. Your answer to my question is greatly appreciated. Our HT is in the family room, which is open to the foyer, kitchen, dining room, bathroom, and hallway. And then it goes on to basically talk about the axial standing wood calculators. Um, are they good enough to actually estimate standing uh, modes, uh, room modes in, in this room with all this being true? And if you do it, do you just put in the dimensions of the theater space or do you put in the whole thing, including all the space it's open to? And the answer is you would put in just the dimensions of the room itself that you're concerned with, but no, it's not accurate. And no, it's not going to give you an accurate estimate of the standing ways of that room, not just because it's open, but because these tend not to be particularly accurate in the first place. So for lots and lots of reasons, standing wave calculators are very crude. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. They're worth looking at. And, and it's fun to compare. But I think most people who have done this have probably found that some line up and many do not. And the more a room strays from a standard solid cuboid space, meaning like a shoebox room, the more it tends to be wrong. So with modern open construction, and especially American construction. So it, in Europe, in Eastern Europe, in certain Asian areas, not all, concrete is a dominant construction uh, material. And the interior walls are too. So what happens is they build, like in Florida, we build homes out of concrete all the time because it withstands hurricanes. But the entire inner shell and all the inner rooms and partition walls are wood. In Europe, that's not really true. It's much more common to build the whole thing on a concrete and all the inner walls are concrete as well. And so that matters because concrete is significantly more massive and stiffer than drywall and pine two by four studs. And so what happens is that those concrete rooms tend to reflect a significantly higher amount of the sound energy and the modes are stronger and worse. In America, we tend to build the outside walls may be concrete, may not. It depends on where you live. But the inside walls are almost always not going to be concrete. They're almost always going to be stud, either steel or wood, probably wood, with drywall. And so what that means is that sometimes, especially with this half-inch lightweight stuff and no insulation, so little sound actually reflects at those low frequencies off of those relatively thin walls that the, the modes don't behave the way you'd expect them to given the physical dimensions of the room. So these calculators are just not all that useful. So what I would say is that I wouldn't worry about the modes too much. I don't know that I would even bother to do the calculations. I don't actually when I do room designs. Instead, I focus on the solutions. I do things like I don't place the main listening position dead center of the room. I do it forward of the center or back of the center. That helps to avoid that mode that tends to be right in the middle. I use techniques that are known to help mitigate modal, mitigate modal issues. Or if there's only one seat I care about, I don't worry about that so much as I look, focus on getting the subwoofers placed optimally such that that one seat is good and then I don't worry about it. Um, so I would say the same thing for you guys. Focus more on the solution and less on identifying the problem. In fact, probably you'd be better off just taking measurements in different positions within your listening space to identify the modal issues that you're having and um, and then from there, looking at solutions to address those. Acoustic treatments work above a certain point, 150 hertz plus. You know, bass traps and stuff like that can be helpful. Below 150 hertz, it's really the multi-sub approach, Dirac art, or waveforming. Waveforming is now public. I need to do some videos on it and show you guys um, now that it's gone public. My own unit is a little bit broken. <laughs> Um, so I need to get it fixed and then I can start doing those videos. So I probably could do something now because it's not so broken. It doesn't work. It just, uh, I can't make lots of presets to show you guys all the different stuff, but, um, and that's nothing to do with the new release. I was using beta and it, for some odd reason, my unit behaved oddly so that when they kept adding on the betas, I just kept running out of memory and now I have no flash memory at all and I can't make presets anymore. That's where I put a new flash drive in it and it'll fix everything hopefully. Um, but anyway, uh, so, you know, these new techniques, these MIMO-based techniques and design approaches make it so that room mode is just not even a concern. And the reality is it's so effective when done correctly that you don't really need to think about this stuff. You just put stuff where it needs to go and then you're good to go. 
um, one of my friends, uh, Shane Lee, just got it working on his system. He's got two subwoofers in the front corners, two subwoofers in the rear corners, and then a subwoofer in the middle front and a subwoofer in the middle rear. He raised, I believe, the front subwoofers off the ground a little bit, maybe a lot. I don't know how much he raised them, but he raised them. And according to... It doesn't do a confirmatory step on its own. He's going to need to do that. I haven't seen his confirmations yet, but at least it's predicted data, um, which is often pretty close to reality when everything is good. There is Things can go wrong when, you, when you're doing uh, Trinov's uh, waveforming. Things can go wrong where the calculations get off and then the measurements don't match the prediction at all. But this is, this is more like, I don't even know if it's a bug. It's more like you did something wrong. So once you fix it and get it all working correctly, it's not an issue. So... Um, in any case, with, with his system, those are not proper speaker positions, keep in mind. It went from like a plus or minus, I think it was almost 6 dB variance around the room to plus or minus less than 2 dB, which is extremely good. So he doesn't even have it in the right locations, and he's already getting CDL level 4 bass consistency from waveforming. Like it's just, we're talking game changer performance improvements from this. Um, and I think people are going to be very impressed. I'm actually impressed. I haven't heard his system. So sometimes it measures really well. Waveforming can measure really well and not sound good. And again, this comes from some of those issues I was talking about. You do have to, the closer you hold to what they tell you to do, the better the end result ends up being. And so sometimes things will look good, but not sound good for various reasons that the system can't really predict. Like you could set up a system that would measure very well where you use, just as an example, like 24 inch subs and you had like, I don't know, two 24 inch subs and then two 10 inch subs in the front and you had like two 10 inch subs in the rear that would probably measure really well if you did it right um the problem you'd run into is you'd be overloading those 10 inch subs because of the 24s or under utilizing the 24s the more likely thing because it doesn't know that there's such a huge difference in output it knows that there's a bandwidth difference but it doesn't know there's a difference in output um is it would overload the tens and so you'd be pushing hard with some movie content and probably start hearing some distortion so there are things people could do that are wrong um the closer you hold to the standard approach that you're supposed to use the better the results tend to be both in terms of measurement and sound but it's game changer in terms of like these modal issues and it just makes i mean anthony Romani and i have talked about this a lot we already had gotten to a point where these design approaches made it so that calculating this wasn't that important anymore now these new technologies are going above and beyond that so anyway thanks for the question i appreciate it and i hope this was helpful uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't um comment these comments are actually helpful and the donations are great really appreciate it so thanks again got more coming